This is my twee. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about patient assessment and I'm gonna go through the whole sheet that you get whenever you're an EMT student on what you have to... My cat. Hi. Please don't touch the camera, okay? Um, how I memorized basically the whole sheet because this is what you're going to use whenever you're in the ambulance going to the person that needs you um, and you run through this sheet to know you know the right questions to ask what to be aware of cat hair in my mouth and um, the detective work that you have to do to eventually find out what's wrong with this person why they called you what might be causing it uh, okay cool um, so I'm going to pop up the sheet on the screen somewhere and then we're just literally going to go step by step how I used acronyms to remember everything. You use this for your patient assessment skills day, uh, the medical and the trauma. And I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to go through patient assessment medical first and then we're going to go through trauma and I'm going to show you the different acronyms I used or, you know, how I remember for the second assessment on the trauma, you have to like do a detailed physical exam of like the scalp and the chest and basically the whole body and how I remembered that. So we're gonna start with patient assessment medical. And the first thing that you're gonna do is say BSI, which just means you have the correct PPE on, which for the most part is gloves. Now it might include a mask because of COVID, but then you're going to go on to the next one, which is scene size up. And there are a certain number of things that you have to remember, okay? And I use the acronym SNAC without the K. So S-N-A-C. And once I have this in my mind, I know exactly what's gonna be coming next for my patient assessment. Okay, so S is gonna be scene size up. Is the scene safe? Okay, and then you have N, which is nature of illness. Now mind you, that only works for uh, the medical assessment, not the trauma assessment, um, because trauma is usually mechanism of engine, mechanism of injury, which obviously is not an N. So you have SN, nature of illness, and then also number of patients. This can determine quickly if you need to get additional resources, additional ambulances, and if you have to set up triage or not. If it's one or two patients, you should be okay. Then you have A, which is additional resources. So you're going to see, do I need an additional ambulance? Then you have C, which is, do I need to consider C-spine? When you're learning about it for the medical portion of it, most of the time you're not gonna say, yes, I want to consider C-spine, which would be you putting a C collar on the patient. This is for the most part more concentrated on trauma. And anytime I get a trauma case, or <laughs> I'm an EMT, I get trauma cases. Whenever one's like explained to me, or this is my case for the day and I have to do my patient assessment on them, like 10 times out of 10, if it's a trauma case, I will put a C collar on them because you never really know what happened to them. So that's gonna be your first acronym that you remember SNAC. Then, you're gonna move on to like the next segment and this is your primary survey. Okay, so once you've had your snack, you have glucose in your body or sugar in your body. So the next one's gonna be GLC. So you got your snack, which gave you glucose, okay? So G is gonna be general impression. You come up to the scene, what is your general impression of this patient? He is sitting in tripod position and he's having a hard time breathing. Okay, it's gonna be something respiratory. Obviously there could be more, but that's your like first kind of like size up of the scene. Okay, so then you have L, which is level of consciousness. And then you're gonna go into four parts of level of consciousness. And this is gonna be AVPU. So they are alert. They respond to verbal stimulation. They respond to painful stimulation or you would be they are unresponsive. And the way that you figure this out is by asking them four questions. Could you tell me your name? Can you tell me where you are? Can you tell me what day it is, what time it is? And do you know where we're here? So that's gonna be included in the level of consciousness. And then, so GLC, then you have chief complaint. So why are we here? So you got your snack, you got your GLC, and then I remember because there was three letters for GLC, there's gonna be three letters after that, which is ABC, which is airway, breathing, and circulation. Okay, and then that obviously breaks out into more portions. You're fine, I can edit this out. <laughs> mm, hey baby. Okay, 
so then you're moving on to airway okay so you have your airway and this can branch out into two sections either the airway is patent not obstructed or it is obstructed and your airway can become obstructed by you know different methods so this can be internally like an anaphylactic shock or your tongue is simply in the way which would be snoring or you have a foreign object stuck in your throat so you have four different sections and this can either be strider um, snoring gurgling or unresponsive so clearly if they're unresponsive you would then just move on to CPR um, and then depending on if it's medical or trauma you're gonna try to open the airway using different methods but you either do draw thrust the head to tilt chin lift or you suction like if you hear gurgling there's clearly some kind of liquid within the oral cavity that you need to get out and then you either put in an oral pharyngeal airway or a nasal pharyngeal airway so OPA or NPA and then you get to move on to breathing um, and within breathing you have to think of three different things so you need to get their respirations which would be their respiratory rate and you do this by counting their breaths in one minute and then you are checking to see if they're getting adequate ventilation so that would be step two and basically you can see whether they're getting adequate ventilations whenever they're breathing so there should be an equal rise and fall of the chest that's all that means and then the last one would be lung sounds so you're going to auscultate the chest then you're going to move on to circulation the first one would be pulse. So you're going to check their pulse and you're going to do this by um, palpating their radial pulse or if you have a machine, you're going to go ahead and do that too. Then you're going to see if there's any major bleeding, any evident bleeding. This can be internal or external depending on if it's a medical or trauma case. And you're going to treat for shock. Um, if there is any bleeding involved and this is going to become more apparent whenever you assess their skin, which is the third kind of branch off of circulation. So you're gonna check for three things of the skin. You're gonna check for condition, the temperature, and the, oh, you're gonna check for the temperature, the color, and condition of the skin. So color, are they pink or are they pale? Which would mean that they're going into shock. And then temperature, do they feel cold to the touch, hot to the touch? This is all gonna give you like tiny clues as to what could possibly be going on with the patient. So are they cool, are they hot, um, are they sweaty? So that's what the condition would be is, are they sweating or not? <laughs> Excuse me, so usually when you hear cool, pale, and diaphoretic, it means that this patient is going into shock and you need to treat them for it. So you just have them um, put oxygen on them and then a blanket to keep them warm. So once you've gone through this initial primary survey, you need to then, the next thing would be decide whether you're gonna transport or not. And for the most part, for most of the scenarios that you go through, you do. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a priority patient and we're gonna transport. Then you're gonna move on to history taking. You're gonna be going into your OPQRST. So you're gonna start with O, which is onset. So either what time did this start or what were you doing when this started? And you're gonna move on to P, which is provocation. Does anything make it better or worse? So yes, when I sit down, the pain goes away in my chest versus if I'm walking around. Then you have Q, which is the quality of the pain. So can you describe the pain to me? Then you're gonna move on to R, which is radiation. So does this pain stay in one place or does it move? And then you have S, which is the scale. So on a scale of one to 10, one being no pain whatsoever, 10 being the worst pain of your life, where do you fall on the scale? T, which is um, what time does this start? And is it constant or does it come in waves? And then I like to add at the end, which is not in OPQRST, which is has this ever happened before? Then you're gonna move on to sample. S would be any more uh, signs or symptoms, anything else that might be going on besides the chest pain or the headache. And then you're gonna move on to A, allergies. Are you allergic to anything medication or food-wise? Because there are certain medications you can't give if they're allergic to certain foods. Then M is gonna be medication. So are you on any medication? Anything over the counter, anything prescribed? Hopefully nothing illegal. I don't know if drugs would kind of go into that, but medication. Then P would be, tell me about your pertinent past history. Do you have, you know, hypertension? or angina or a history of cardiac problems then you're going to move on to l which is when was the last time that you ate or drank something the last one is e for events so what were the events leading up to this it's kind of asking 
like for onset like what were you doing when this started but it's just to like clarify so you were riding your bike you were sitting on the couch what were you doing right before it started then you're going to move on to your secondary assessment and this is going to so once you have a little bit of a clue of what specifically it is so if it's chest pain you would just have your secondary assessment more focused on that so if it's anything car um like cardiac related then you would auscultate the chest again you're going to check for capillary refill to see um, the circulation of the patient. Then you're going to check for pedal edema, which is just swelling in the feet. And then if it's something within like the gastrointestinal region, you're going to palpate the area. You'd usually start like, so you have four quadrants in your stomach. And if this quadrant is painful, you're not going to touch that one first because then they're not going to feel the rest. So you're going to kind of go one above it and then go or below it, depending on where it is. Um, and then move in a clockwise um, motion. Then moving on, if it's pulmonary, you're gonna just auscultate the chest and again, look at the respiratory rate. If it's neurological, you're going to reassess their level of consciousness. Now you did this at the very beginning, but if you do it again, either they improved or they got getting worse, which could give you more clues as to what it could possibly be. Now mind you, at this point, you still haven't given any treatment. You're still trying to figure out what this could possibly be. Now I have been talking for 10 minutes, but this process takes just a couple minutes. Like it's very quick. I mean, you're not seeing a patient going, okay, what is your general impression of this patient? Like you're thinking about this. Like the first question you ask is, what is your name? You know, level of consciousness. Okay, going back. If you're checking for neurological, okay, you'd be reassessing the LOC, but then you'd be also checking blood sugar um, to see if this patient is having a diabetic emergency, if they do have diabetes or if they just have low blood sugar. And then you're also gonna do a stroke assessment. Uh, again, if this is a neurological case, and you're gonna check the pupils for pearl to see if they're equal and reactive to light. And if they're not, then you know that there's something, some issue going on in the brain and that can give you a little bit more clues as to what it could be. So this whole thing is kind of detective work to figure out you know, what treatment to give the patient. Um, if it is musculoskeletal, blah, musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal, then you're just going to uh, basically, if it hurts, look at it. Like, I hurt my arm. Well, then you would take off whatever clothing they have on and then inspect and palpate the area. And then if it's like the skin or the integumentary, which is the same thing, if they have any kind of rash, bite, or sting, you're going to go based off of that. Obviously, remove whatever is hurting them. That is the second uh, secondary assessment for a medical case. Then you're going to move on to vital signs. And you're going to check their blood pressure, their pulse, the respiratory rate, their blood sugar if you haven't already, their temperature, so anything that can go within vital signs. And then you're gonna get your field impression. And this is what you're gonna go through in your head. Like, okay, I believe that this person or my patient is having a diabetic emergency and they are hypoglycemic and this is the treatment that I now have to give them. So you're giving them a drug. You're going to reassess their vital signs after five minutes to see if they have improved at all or if they're still declining. And then after the reassessment, you're going to give your oral report to the hospital. Call them and say, we are en route with a 55 year old male who presented with this and this is their last known vital signs and they were treated with this. We are five minutes out. Do we have, um, do you have any questions or standing orders? So I learned the hard way that this needs to be like strong and concise. Whenever I had my patient assessment on skills day, the medical, I was like, this is a 55 year old patient and he has a history of this and he's allergic to this. And when, you know, he complained of this and these were his symptoms and you know, his blood pressure and pulse were this, like they've already put down the phone and they're working on another patient. You have to say, you know, this is a male. They presented with this, this is what we've given them and this is how far away we are. So it's like quick, you give them the basic information because they're gonna ask all of these questions again when they get there anyway. So they get asked this sheet of questions again and again and again to make sure that nothing is missed or that they give the right treatment. That is the patient assessment for medical. And whenever you're moving on to your trauma one, it is gonna be slightly different. So for within snack, the N is gonna turn into mechanism of injury. Did they fall off a tree and hurt their leg? So nature of illness is more internal, like something that your body does to you versus mechanism of injury is something that is done to your body. They were stabbed, they were shot, they got into an accident, mechanism of, in of injury. And then the only thing that would 
really change is um, so you have your snack GLC ABC transport obviously yes so within the snack the C would be C spine yes I'm gonna consider C spine they fell from a tree I don't know if they hurt their spine or they got into an accident we just need to make sure that their spine is protected then you have your history taking but you just take out OPQRST completely and then you have your sample which is signs and symptoms tell me what's going on what hurts the most does anything else hurt um, you know, allergies, medication, pertinent past history. If they do have something in their history that might make this injury worse, last time they ate or drank something, and then can you tell me again exactly what happened? Then you have your secondary assessment. And this one's gonna be a lot more focused, and it's not only going to be on like a specific part of the body. Within the medical, like let's say they're having a cardiac problem, you're gonna like specifically focus more towards the chest. Now, if it's a trauma case, you're going to do a secondary assessment on the whole body. Obviously, if this patient isn't like super dire and they either need to be transported right now or they will die en route, that's a different story. But I'm talking about if this person's gone to an accident and they have a broken leg, I need to check your whole body to see if there's anything that we might have missed. So the way that I have remembered it, because you get to write down your little acronyms right before you get tested, also for your oral boards, I just remembered 5334552. I'm about to explain, but that's a lot easier to remember than scalp, eyes, nose, mouth, you know, neck, chest. So the first one is five. So I know that I'm going to be starting with the head, and there are five things that I need to check on scalp, eyes, nose, mouth, and any other facial features. Boom. Once I've said those five, I can check off the head but you have to specifically ask i'm going to check pearl in their eyes or i'm going to inspect and palpate their nose is there anything i need to be aware of then you're going to move on to neck which is three you're going to check the alignment of the trachea so if the um, trachea is veering off into one side that you know that they have a respiratory problem and they might have a pneumothorax and that's a big deal so you're going to check the alignment of the trachea you're going to check for jugular vein distension this would be a cardiac problem and you're going to check the c-spine so that's three things done. Then you're gonna move on to the chest, which is also three. You're going to inspect, palpate, and osculate the chest. Osculate, auscultate the chest. So that's three. Then you're gonna move on to the abdomen, which is four. So you're going to inspect and palpate all four quadrants. Then you're going to check the stabilization of the pelvis. And then you're going to check the genitalia or the perineum if it is needed. And so you kind of just go down this list and you're just hitting every single one. Okay, so once you've hit the abdomen area, you're going to move on to five. Five would be the legs. You're going to inspect inspect and palpate the legs. And you're going to check for what I like to call PMS, which is pulse, motor, and sensory. Pulse, you're going to check their pulse um, of their leg. Motor, can you wiggle your toes for me? Sensory, which toe am I touching? Then you're gonna move on to the next five, which is arms. Same thing, inspect, palpate, PMS, um, pulse, motor, sensory. Then the last one is two. So you're gonna log roll the patient. You you know haven't done their back yet, um, and it would be back and buttocks. And you can also break this down further, but it's inspect and palpate the back as well as the spine, and then inspect and palpate the buttocks. So that's how I remembered it. Literally just those numbers, I wrote them down, then I wrote, um, head, neck, chest, abdomen, legs, arms, back, and that's how I remembered it. So whenever you're doing your more um, detailed assessment, you're essentially looking for DCAP BTLS. It stands for deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, um, burns, tenderness, lacerations, and uh, swelling. And then you take their vital signs. I mean, there's really no treatment. I mean, it's not like you give them nitro. So you splint them, you do whatever you need to do. And if they're unstable, you reassess them every five minutes in the ambulance. And then you're dead. So really easy. You know, you do have to obviously modify things between medical and trauma. But it's just your BSI, SNAC, GLC, ABC, do I need to transport OBQRST, sample, secondary assessment, vital signs, field impression, intervention, um, reassessment, and oral report. That's the medical one. And then the same thing once you get the secondary assessment. Um, obviously, that's the whole body. 
then vital signs, interventions, and then you're done. But that is how I um, remembered it for my oral boards. You write it so quick and then you don't have to think about anything else other than the information they're giving you. So S, I know this is, you know, scene safety. Is the scene safe? And they say yes or no. Then I'm like N, okay, I know what N is. So you're gonna ask, what is the nature of illness? What is the mechanism of injury? And how many patients do it have? So you literally have all of the answers or all the questions in front of you and all you have to do is just ask one at a time and they give you that information. That is everything that I have for y'all today. Please make sure to subscribe and like. That really helps out my channel and helps me grow and helps me be more connected with you guys. Please make sure to comment any questions that y'all have or any other acronyms or methods that y'all use. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see y'all next time.